I'm going to get started and as people join, um, please make sure that you keep muted. Um, you're welcome to turn your camera on, but just keep muted during the presentation. We definitely hope that we have time to take questions at the end. So if you do have questions, type them into the chat. And if we have time, we'll definitely start going down the list of questions for our presenters. So welcome back um, or welcome to folks attending the webinar today. We've had an entire series, as some of you know, on managing neonicotinoids, a class of um, insecticides in row crops. And so we've added an additional webinar um, in the new year and we'll keep, you can see it says January, 2023. I forgot to update the year. But um, we wanted to hear from our neighbors in the north um, in Quebec and try to understand what they've been doing to the north of us to transition away from neonicotinoid treated seed. But I believe what we're going to hear about really is transition away from insecticide treated seed in general. And so hopefully getting some good information and a better understanding of how other farmers are adapting and managing um, some of the shifts in pest management that uh, we're going to have to be doing as well. Um, our, our key collaborator today is the Vermont Bee Lab and really excited to be joined by Samantha Alger who leads the Bee Lab and she'll be facilitating the discussion today. Um, so I will turn it over to her in a second. I know everybody has likely met Sam, but again, she's the lead for the Vermont Bee Lab here at the University of Vermont, and she has been so gracious to put together um, a panel of farmers from Quebec that um, will be introducing themselves shortly, dairy farmers and crop farmers doing the same things we are here. So excited again to hear um, what's happening up north. So just for folks that need credits, uh, continuing education credits. We will put up a QR code at the end with the uh, to get your credit for uh, certified crop advisor. And then we also have a pesticide applicator credit for today as well. And you can email Susan um, or you can put it in the chat and uh, she'll make sure that you get your credit. All right, so Sam, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thanks, Heather. Samantha Alger here, research professor at UVM. I run the Vermont Bee Lab. Um, this panel discussion was put together with UVM Extension, the Bee Lab, and uh, Louis Robert, who's here today. He really was helpful in help putting together the panelists that are going to be speaking today. He's a former agronomist at the Quebec Agriculture, Fisheries, and Food Ministry. Uh, and special thanks to Susan with all of her expertise in technology and logistics. And of course, thanks to the farmer panelists for lending us their time. Um, so to start, I'd like to give folks the context for this conversation we're going to have. Uh, in 2019, Quebec passed restrictions on neonic treated seeds, and as a result, the farmers, the government, and markets have adjusted to make this transition. Um, and just last month, in December, we saw a bill in New York signed into law phasing out the use of neonic treated seeds and a ban on non-ag uses of neonics. And here in Vermont, a bill was just introduced that is largely modeled after the New York bill. And so with all of these kind of proposed changes or changes happening to our neighbors in the north and to the west and potential for changes happening here in Vermont, farmers are understandably wondering about how to make these transitions. And so since Quebec started um, with this whole process in 2019, we thought it would be useful to interview a panel of Quebec farmers to learn about their experiences. And so we've prepared four questions for the farmers to answer. And if there's time, after these questions, we will open up to allow questions from the public and you can put those questions in the chat. And we're gonna ask that panelists um, please help keep their answers to short to two to three minutes for each question so that we can make sure we use the best, have the best use of everyone's time. We have Louis Robert here um, to help translate as needed. And so we'll start with a um, introduction from Louis and then we can ask the panelists to introduce themselves. And I think we'll probably follow in that um, that order with the panelists as we go through each question. So Louis Robert, please introduce right. yourself. Thank you, Sam. 
Good morning to all. Yeah, I'll make it short. Uh, I'm an agronomist uh, and a field crop specialist. Uh, I work with the Department of Agriculture here at the Ministry of Agriculture in Quebec for 35 years. As uh, Since 2022, the spring of 2022, I'm retired, but I still do work as a, a consultant agronomist. And I'm still in, very much involved still in the... Uh, in fields, in, in feed crops and soil quality and that sort of things. And so, uh, and I, I follow, I've been uh, following the issue of uh, pesticides in Quebec uh, for decades now. So, and I invited uh, four panelists here. I'll do the translation as we go along from either side, uh, mostly from French to English. But now I'll just uh, turn over the, the Microphone to uh, my our panelists here. I'll start with the, the first in line here is Jocelyn. Could you just give a few words? Bonjour à tous. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm from the, La Présentation uh, near Saint, uh, close to Saint Hyacinthe, and my farm is uh, around 600 acres. I have 200 acres of corn, 200 acres of soybeans for uh, seed production and 100 acres of green beans uh, for uh, processing. Um, everything is no-till, and I use cover crops almost everywhere each year. Thank you. I guess that's easy for me now. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, moving to uh, Renaud, uh, in français uh, or in English, as you wish. Hi everyone, uh, uh, je suis Renaud Pelequin, je viens de saint victoire de sorol proche du fleuve Saint-Laurent. Uh, je suis le plus au nord de tous les panélistes, uh, j'ai beaucoup de neige ici en ce moment. Uh, je cultive 1300 arbres en maïs, en soya, en céréales d'automne et en blé de printemps. Uh, je fais du travail réduit et je fais du... Uh, Semi-direct, je fais un mélange des deux et j'utilise beaucoup de cultures de couverture. Je te laisse traduire, Louis. Well, thank you, Renaud. Renaud is from saint victoire de sorel which is a uh, village uh, close to the St. Lawrence River. Uh, he grows uh, a little bit over 1,300 acres of corn, soybeans, winter wheat, cover crops as well, under a rich till and no till. Okay, Francis or Stefan. I, I can do. Uh, I'll do my okay. best to speak in English, but uh, if you don't understand, just uh, let me know, please. No problem. So, uh, I'm at uh, St. Sinias de Stanbridge, around uh, 15 minutes from the US border. We have a dairy farm here with my brother and uh, my parents. Uh, we have uh, 300 acres in culture. Uh, we do hay corn for silage, corn for grain, uh, soybean, uh, winter wheat, and uh, winter uh, rye, rye, I think. Wait. Yes, we do, winter rye. We do mainly uh, uh, no-till and uh, minimum till, and we also do uh, cover crops. Okay, and Stefan? Oui, euh, moi, je suis Stéphane Pitre, je suis de la Saint-Louis de Gonzague. Euh, C'est près de l'Ontario et l'État de New York, euh, au sud-ouest de Montréal. Euh, je suis producteur laitier et euh, de grande culture de 350 acres de maïs, soya et blé, et blé d'automne. Euh, tout ça est en semi-direct ou en minimum till. Euh, beaucoup d'engrais verts et... Euh, Beaucoup de nivelage après le blé euh, pour mettre les terres propices au semi-direct. Ça fait 20 ans qu'on est en semi-direct. Good. Thank you, Francis. Uh, Francis is saying that uh, he, uh, he farms in Saint Louis de Gonzague, which is a village that close to the Ontario and New York border, southwestern Quebec. Um, and uh, they have a, a milk uh, dairy farm. And they, they grow cash crops on 300 acres of uh, wheat, uh, corn, soybeans under no till and reduced till. And they do a lot of uh, cover crops as well. 
Okay, um, all of our, all, all four of our panelists uh, got rid of, they don't use insecticide anymore on the seed. That is, uh, so uh, for some of them for the last uh, five years, uh, but uh, for in the case of Jocelyn, and I believe uh, Stefan, it's much longer than that. Thank you, Louis. Are we ready for the first question? Okay. Yes, we um, are. Okay, wonderful. So farmers are concerned about the availability of corn and soy seed that is not treated with neonicotinoids. It's apparently difficult to find non-treated seed and generally only one variety is available. Can you share your experiences in sourcing and purchasing seed that is not treated with neonicotinoids? And did you find it difficult? And is this situation improving? And we can just go in the same order in which we had introductions, if that makes sense. Okay, en utilisant à peu près le même ordre des panélistes, uh, Jocelyn Renaud, uh, Francis et Stéphane, on va, la question, ça, ça rapporte au, uh, à la disponibilité de semences sans néonique. Comment dit que vous avez connu, est-ce que vous avez connu des, des difficultés à obtenir ces semences-là? Euh, je vais faire en français, ce ici, ça ne dérange pas. Pas de problème. Euh, Bien, euh, comme tu sais, moi, j'avais assisté à une conférence de Geneviève Labry aux environs de 2014-2015, qui nous avait sensibilisés euh, au risque de l'utilisation des néoniques. Donc, euh, immédiatement après la conférence, j'ai contacté euh, mon agronome du Club Agro, et ainsi que mon expert conseil de la coop pour faire du dépistage sur ma ferme, afin de savoir, de savoir si c'était vraiment utile. Mais à ce moment-là, la coop avait déjà commencé à être sensibilisée aux problèmes et puis il y avait quelques variétés qu'on pouvait avoir sans traitement de semence. Mais il a fallu probablement deux, trois années supplémentaires afin que toutes les variétés, en tout cas que moi je désirais, soient 100 sans insecticides. Donc, ça s'est fait assez facilement, pas assez rapidement. Sur une période de un an, deux ans peut-être? Deux, deux à trois ans, je dirais. OK. All right, so Jocelyn is saying that uh, he attended the conference by a researcher, a well-known researcher in Quebec anyway. Uh, her name is Geneviève Labry. She did the uh, pioneering uh, research uh, work on, on the use of uh, the effect of neonics on the actual insect pests that we have in Quebec. And as, as early as 2014, she uh, issued the first uh, preliminary first results from that uh, project. And it said that uh, it, there was no effect, uh, no benefit to use uh, the neonic coating on corn and soybean. So, so uh, Rosalind didn't lose any time. Right away, he switched. He didn't use any neonics the next year. Or in a three-year span, he got rid of all of his uh, of his neonics uh, uh, in a, on the seed. And uh, he asked his agronomist advisors too to do some scouting at the beginning and to look after his field if uh, there was any risk associated with the fact that he didn't use any neonics uh, any, uh, anymore. And just think, you, you, you fait des années avec des uh, diamètres, des diamètres, hein? uh, uh, des, des insecticides après, ou tu as tout passé de neonic à sans insecticides? Aussitôt que les, les variétés que je voulais étaient sans insecticides, je suis devenu 100%. Ça a pris deux à trois ans, comme je le, comme je le disais. Okay. So Jocelyn is saying that uh, he didn't have, at first it was a little bit difficult to find seed with no neonics, but in, uh, after two or three years, uh, the varieties that he, the hybrids that he was using were available from his seed supplier, were available with no insecticide. So he didn't have to, uh, to go to a, 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 an additional step of using either diamide or other insecticide. He right away switched to no insecticide whatsoever on his seed in a two to three year span. Je pourrais rajouter, oui, que ça a été un peu plus facile pour moi parce qu'à ma coop, il y avait les, beaucoup de semences qui étaient déjà en sachet ici au Québec, alors que beaucoup de semences viennent de l'extérieur de la province et on n'avait pas le choix, ces variétés-là, on n'avait pas le choix de les avoir sans insecticide. Yeah. Jocelyn is adding that uh, with his own uh, seed supplier, the co-op here in Quebec, it was uh, easier than for other farmers because uh, the co-op here in Quebec was uh, 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 bagging the seeds here in Quebec. They were importing the seed 
in huge uh, lots and bagging them right here. So he was, uh, it was uh, on short notice, he could tell them, no, stop, don't put any insecticide on my seed and uh, deliver the seed to my farm. So that's why. Okay. Merci. Maintenant, Renaud. Euh, pour la même pour question, ça va. À... Oui. Ouais, euh, pour rester question. avec euh, qu ce que Jocelyn a dit, au début, c'était difficile. Une chance qu'on avait notre coop qui était capable de nous fournir des maïs euh, avec son insecticide. Euh, ce que je pourrais dire aux producteurs américains, faites pression auprès de vos vendeurs. Ils savent qu'ils sont capables d'en avoir. Mais c'est plus facile de vendre le stock qui est déjà fait, préfait. Euh, parce qu'en ce moment, l'Ontario n'en fait en masse que Mazex, Pioneer, euh, même Cropland, euh, Decal sont capables d'en fournir des maïs sans insecticides. On, 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 c'est nous autres qui a brisé la glace en ce moment. C'est supposé d'être disponible, peut-être pas partout aux États-Unis, mais je suis sûr que de la semence venant de l'Ontario, ça, ça devrait être disponible pour eux autres. Tu peux aussi, dans ton cas, te passer de néonique à sans insecticides aussi. Et du médium, quand tu as tu pas utilisé ça. Je n'ai pas utilisé ça. Right. Merci, Renaud. So, uh, again, with Renaud, it's just basically the same uh, process. Uh, he, uh, he switched from uh, neonic uh, coated seed to no insecticide on the seed, just fungicides. And he also is a, uh, he is also a customer of co-op, so it was relatively easy for them to provide with uh, uh, insecticide free seed. Uh, he's saying that uh, also, uh, uh, don't, don't be fooled. He's saying to, the, to our Vermont uh, friend that uh, don't be fooled because all the seed suppliers, they can turn around pretty quickly and provide with insecticide free seed in no, in no time, actually. There's a lot of uh, marketing strategies to scare people if they use uh, They need to use uh, neonics, but uh, you shouldn't be uh, bothered with that. You know, they, they, they can turn around pretty quickly and provide with uh, insecticide free, free seed. And I might add too that the Department of Agriculture in Quebec has issued every year, they, they issue uh, a communique, a press release where they have a list of uh, insecticide free hybrids available with the different seed suppliers, Pioneer and and NP and uh, all those companies. So uh, it became very available uh, to, uh, for, you know, to know, it's a competitive approach. They have to uh, make them available for the customers. So they have no choice. Customers always, is always right. If he uh, asked for insecticide free seed, he'd get them. Okay, Francis, Yes. Stéphane? Okay, you... Francis. Okay, I'll go. Uh, we start like uh, 10 years ago and uh, the beginning, it was uh, harder to get uh, non-treated seed. We, have, uh, we had to ask the dealer to, uh, to get it. Uh, for uh, grain corn was easy, but for silage corn, it was hard. So uh, we started using non-treated uh, seed for silage about uh, four or five years because uh, it was not available. But uh, for uh, 2024, uh, we didn't ask uh, the, the dealer and he just asked us if we wanted treated or not treated. So it was pretty easy for next year. Okay, merci. Et uh, Stéphane? Oui, euh, nous, euh, on n'a jamais eu beaucoup de difficultés à, à l'approvisionnement de, de nos semences en, en commande hâtive. Euh, on a toujours eu les variétés euh, voulues euh, depuis 2015. On a eu des difficultés quand on a des retours de poche ou des changements d'hybrides au printemps pour des soit des plus hâtives ou tardives. Euh, là, des fois, on n'avait pas les, les variétés voulues. Euh, puis dans le soya, nous, on fait affaire avec un, un, un centre de grains de chez nous qui, euh, qui produit les semences. Fait on n'a pas eu de difficultés dans le soya euh, au cours des années. Euh, de ne pas, de pas en mettre, même ils n'en mettent plus en tout à ce temps que, Il y a de moins de monde euh, qui veulent en mettre d'insecticides au, aujourd'hui que, que de ne pas en mettre. Fait ils ont décidé de ne plus en mettre euh, pour le soya en général. 
Puis euh, okay. c'est ça. On n'a pas eu. Euh, on en utilise depuis 2015 seulement des petites superficies dans des semi-directs, de, dans des vieilles prairies, parce qu'on a eu des problèmes de verre, fil de fer. Mais ce n'est pas tous les ans, puis c'est des petites quantités. Là. Et ce n'est pas des néoniques, c'est des cartenza ou de ah, c'est ça. Hein, c'est ça? Ouais. Okay. Merci, euh, Stéphane. OK, uh, Stéphane is uh, saying that he didn't find, uh, he didn't have big, uh, huge problems with uh, sourcing seed uh, without insecticide. Uh, as long as you put your order early, early on in the season in the fall, then you will not have a, any problem with the, uh, getting the seed you, you need. Uh, sometimes they find it's difficult to return seed for, for example, uh, late spring, and then they have to cut in the uh, corn eat units or the, uh, the uh, maturity uh, group that they're using. But uh, overall, at the end, it wasn't ev- even in those occasion- occasions, it wasn't a big problem for the companies to switch, to change the, uh, the seed, uh, the, the hybrids or the varieties, especially in soybeans, since uh, soybean seed in Quebec, more of the soybean seed is, is processed and bagged in, in, in this area than in the case uh, with corn. Almost all corn seeds come from Ontario or uh, Midwest, the Midwest. That's a difference there. But providing an early order, then uh, they didn't experience any problem. All right, thank you everyone. On to question two. Uh, We have seen a lot of research demonstrating that neonic treated seeds provide little benefit for crop yields. As Quebec has transitioned away from neonics, have you experienced any crop loss due to insect pests after transitioning away from the neonic seeds? Or have you seen any benefits? Donc, la question porte sur euh, des... Est-ce que vous avez observé des effets sur les rendements des pertes de population? Ou, à l'inverse, est-ce que vous avez pu observer des bénéfices à utiliser des, des semences qui n'avaient pas de, d'infecticides. Jocelyn? Euh, il y a, je ne me souviens pas le nombre d'années, mais peut-être 10 à 15 ans, on faisait des comparables. Et puis, ce qu'on nous disait, c'est qu'il pouvait y avoir une augmentation de rendement avec les léoniques allant jusqu'à 400 kg à l'hectare. Même des fois, on disait 800 kg à l'hectare. Mais chez moi, on ne voyait à peu près pas de différence. Puis euh, aujourd'hui, je n'ai ben, pas d'inquiétude à ne pas les utiliser du tout. Là. OK, merci. Thank you. Jocelyn, from his uh, point of view, he, uh, he did some trials to 10 years or 15 years ago with or without insecticides. And at the time, they were told that uh, they might not see a, an, an effect on the insect damage, but yet even if even when there's no insect pressure, farmers will see an increase in yield from using uh, insecticide on the seed. And at, at that time, they were reporting, uh, they were promising an increase of about a ton per acre or ton per hectare uh, at, uh, in green yield. So that, uh, that would be about uh, 40 to four, uh, 400 pounds per acre increase in yield. But he didn't, he didn't see that uh, whatsoever. In any year, he, throughout uh, the years that he did trials, he didn't see any difference in yield. So there was no uh, impact on yield. But he didn't see, well, apart from the fact that they don't, uh, it doesn't put any uh, toxic chemicals in the environment, he didn't see any benefit, you know, uh, uh, higher yield from not using insecticide. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, no? Oui. Euh, alors, Renaud, que parle? Euh, je dirais que je n'hésiterais pas du tout s'il fallait, à un moment donné, qu'on fasse du dépistage, qu'on se rend compte qu'il y a des pertes à cause du, de l'insecte. Des insectes, euh, je n'aurais pas de difficulté à retourner à l'utilisation de ça. Mais pour l'instant, on n'en a pas besoin et on ne voit pas de dommages. OK. Je pense que si ever il voit une évidence of a good a positive effect of using insecticide, you won't have any you won't have any problem going back to the use of insecticides. But for the time being, it doesn't see any benefit of using insecticides. Oui, euh, 
pour rajouter avec euh, Jocelyn, euh, j'ai aucun, euh, aucune perte là, en ce moment là, pour utiliser des insecticides. Euh, comme tantôt Stéphane a parlé, il faut faire attention aux prairies, aux retours d'engraveurs. Faut, je te dirais, il la... y a une stratégie, puis nous autres, la plus belle exemple, on a, puis je pense aussi qu'il doit en avoir dans le Vermont, c'est qu'on se compare aux gars de bio. Les gars de bio utilisent zéro insecticide, mais ils savent quand est ce le champ. Ils sont patients, ils attendent la chaleur, ils attendent que la plante soit capable, que le grain du maïs se développe très vite. C'est ça qu'il faut, euh, qu faut faire attention quand on sait qu'il peut avoir une petite chance d'avoir des... Il faut être patient. Tu sais, comme moi, j'aime dire, euh, j'ai un gars de bio dans mon coin. Quand il annonce à tous les ans quand est-ce qu'il commence à semer son maïs, quand lui commence à semer son maïs, mais là, je sais que pour mes champs qui sont un peu problématiques, là, je sais que je peux aller semer mon maïs sans insecticides dans ces champs-là. Merci, c'est good. OK, so I know he's saying that... Uh... It, it doesn't see. It, it didn't see any any problem in the yield the drop uh, from uh, using insecticide-free seed, but you have to be careful uh, at, at the same time, and especially in the springtime, you have to be patient and wait for the soil to be uh, in good condition for for planting or seeding. And so one of the one of its tricks is to look uh, to check is uh, one of his neighbors who is uh, an organic farmer. And then whenever this organic farmer finds that it's right, the time is right for seeding, then everybody goes out and start to seed because they, they, they wait a little bit further, you know, some extra days for the soil to warm up. Because whenever you, you lengthen the duration of the, that the seed is in the ground with soil and, and moist condition, then you increase the risk of, of damage. And you have to be also careful with the uh, preceding crop. If it's a grassland, a hay, a hay seal, then you increase the risk of having some damage by the insects. But apart from that, uh, everything's fine. Francis? Uh, when we start, we were not using 100% non-treated seeds. So uh, we could uh, compare every yield and it was uh, almost the same. So uh, right now we're uh, using 100% uh, non-treated seeds. And when I compare to uh, neighbors or other people, there's no difference. We never had any problem with it. So until the day we have an insect problem, we'll, we'll keep going with the non-treated seeds. Francis, the to clarify. Seeds. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. To clarify, when you say 100% non-treated seed, are you saying not non-neonicotinoid treated seed or non-treated seed, no treatments? Uh, non non neonic, sorry. <laughs> non, no insecticide. Eh? No insecticide. No insecticide. So there's yeah. there's a fungicide coating, yes. but no yes. insecticide in the mixture. We're not organic or anything. No. Now the farmers experience in, with that respect, you know, of uh, uh, detecting yield difference between treated and untreated. You know, it's it's valuable, but it's at the same time it's pretty hard to have all the same conditions, the right conditions for uh, the sound comparison of treated versus non-treated. You have this, uh, you have the same hybrid, the same seed lot even. So it's not, it's not easy for a farmer to have to, to run a, a viable uh, test in his fields. But uh, for one, I think he was part of that network with the researcher, Geneviève Labry. So it was an inner research project. She did use the sa exact same lot, seed lot, in the same condition. Stéphane, as tu des choses à ajouter? Euh, oui, ben, <coughs> moi, nous, on n'a pas vu vraiment de problème. Euh, c'est juste le, un atout, c'est d'être patient le printemps, là, comme vous rajoutez aux autres, on dit, euh, d'avoir le, le bon moment pour semer euh, la terre assez chaude. Plus que la germination se fait vite, moins les problèmes arrivent. <rire> Puis, euh, je voulais peut-être, on a intelligible aussi à notre subvention de, une rétribution là, de 44 pièces d'hectare, ce n'est pas négligé aussi là, en argent là, pour euh, les bonnes pratiques. Puis euh, en même temps aussi, euh, la manipulation, là, je trouve ça bien intéressant de ne pas en avoir par vous. Euh, c'est plus sécuritaire. Euh, c'est ça. Euh, le 44 pièces d'hectare, c'est-tu la financière, ça aussi? Oui, euh... c'est la rétribution des bonnes oui. pratiques. 
C'est 44 pièces lecteur, 44 c'est 18, 18 dollars que, si tu veux le convertir de suite. <rire> OK, merci. OK, so uh, Stéphane is uh, adding a, a very good point here. It's that uh, the uh, insurance board here in Quebec, the crop insurance board, is, is offering farmers a, uh, an $18 per acre incentive for not using insecticides on their seed. So, but you've, you've got to be a, 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 what, a member or a, a user of their program, but nevertheless, it's, it's, a good, it's good money, $18 per acre for not using insecticides. So it's a good insective, incentive. Uh, Stéphane didn't see any yield difference uh, either. Uh, he uh, insists on, the, uh, on, the, on being patient in the springtime to wait for the, the soil to warm up to a proper condition. And that's, that's a key factor actually. You need to have a quick germination of the crop, be it uh, corn or soybeans. It's the same. You have to. You don't want the, the seed to sit in the in moist and cold ground for too long. And if you're an early planter, be patient and wait a little bit longer, a couple of days or maybe a week later before seeding. And uh, he's also mentioned a good point about handling. You know, one of the benefit he sees of not using insecticide is that you're not bothered, you know, you're not, you're not yourself intoxicated and contaminated with ending toxic seed, toxic chemicals. So that's not, uh, that's a good point, yeah. Une précision, Louis, euh, concernant le 18 de l'arbre ou le 44 l'hectare, euh, c'est pas tous les producteurs là, qui l'ont, c'est seulement ceux qui ont réussi à s'inscrire au plan d'agriculture durable. OK, OK. So uh, Jocelyn is saying that uh, they, that incentive of $18 per acre, you have to register, you have to fill in the form and uh, send it uh, on time for the Department of Agriculture to recognize it. But combien de, t'as pas une idée, hein, du pourcentage de producteurs qui pourraient l'avoir? Je sais qu'il y avait plusieurs millions, là, mais euh, okay. peut-être 30%, mais je ne suis pas certain du chiffre. OK. It, 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 maybe about... 30% of all corn growers benefited from that uh, $18 per acre incentive. And uh, of course, that Canadian dollars, so uh, it's, it's, it's not very good. It's not very high, but more than that, uh, better than, than nothing. Well, thank you. Okay. Uh, so question three, uh, Quebec has a justification of need program where a third party agronomist performs a pest assessment to show neonicotinoids are warranted and needed before granting the farmer a waiver. We're curious about what this process entails. So maybe Louis Rubber could give an overview a little bit about that before we um, ask the farmers to follow up with, um, you know, is this a look at the environment and pest scouting? And for the farmers, have you been through this process before? And if so, what was your experience with the process? I know that none of the panelists here have uh, used that process so far, and the very few actually did use it because uh, it's needed only in the case that you want to use neonic. And uh, if you uh, you look at the situation in Quebec, most growers, if they're they're not using insecticide, they don't. I mean, they're, they're moving right from uh, neonics to no insecticide, uh, pretty pretty fast. So, and if they're moving to diamides, then they don't need to, to go through that process of uh, justification of need. So there's uh, maybe about 120, 130 cases altogether, all regions of Quebec since the implementation of that uh, regulation that actually did use it. And it's a very simple on the, as a, in terms of paperwork, if this is a step an additional step for a farmer to perform it. They don't want to do that. They have to, to have to, uh, to obtain the service uh, of an agronomist and who fill in the form, send in the form to the Department of Environment. There are two forms actually, you know, which are pretty simple. And but if you want to do a good job, you have, uh, for example, here in Quebec, we uh, researchers have developed an online decision uh, support tool called VFFQC. VF in the Fai Quebec, it is free, it's online. You can use it in Vermont while it's in French, of course, but, and it involves also, it, 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 you're, you're right, it involves scouting, it involves uh, risk assessments. For example, you, you type in the soil texture, uh, the history of the field, so on and so forth. 
all the factors that would increase the risk of having a problem with the an insect in the soil. So uh, there, there's a voluntary scouting and measure and the compulsory forms to fill in. And uh, I was told by the Department of Environment that most of the time the, uh, the procedure is not, is not done correctly. So they have to go through once all over again with the agronomist because it's not filled in properly. So it's, it's not working fine. So most people would, uh, are rather moving, rather moving very, very quickly to new insecticide rather than going to, uh, or to uh, diamides rather than having to fill in those forms. Do you see what I mean? So it was a, it, that regulation that was put in place and requiring a justification of need did pretty much the same result as having a complete ban on you know, NICS here in Quebec, you see? So uh, we sw they switch either they switch to diamide coatings or they switch like the four people that four farmers we have here they switch to altogether to no insecticide at all. So uh, there, there's a there's a procedure and there, there's a there's a uh, cumbersome uh, paperwork, but uh, it's easy to to do without those simply by. Uh, going to either diamides or no insecticide at all. Thanks, oh, Louis. Um, oui. oh, I was going to say, you, you did say that the farmers here have not been through this process. So I'll just allow each of you to respond if you'd like to that question, to offer your comments. But if, if you haven't um, experienced it, that's fine. But you're welcome to, to answer the question or give your comments. Well, I'm so I'm they, like, oui. Oui. Vous avez compris la question? Oui? oui. Vous savez la procédure, là? Le... Oui. Ben, tu veux je utiliser des Je dis qu'à qu ma coop, il y a, si je ne me trompe pas, il y a moins de 1 des ventes de sabances qui sont faites avec Néonique. Moi, je n'en utilise pas. Si j'avais à le faire, si j'ai bien compris, j'aurais besoin de faire du dépistage et faire la démonstration que j'en ai besoin, puis ça serait une signature d'un agronome. C'est aussi simple que ça. Et ça, ça ne tente pas de faire ça. Non. <rire> <rire> OK. So Jasley is saying that uh, overall, he says that uh, and the official figure put out by the Dep Department of Environment is that less than 0.5% of corn acreage here in Quebec still is treated with neonics. Over 99% of the corn acreage, no uh, neonics. Some, maybe uh, half of it is still treated with insecticide, that is diamide insecticide. But Justin is, is, is also uh, saying the same thing I was saying, that it's, it's just too much trouble. It's cumbersome to run through, to go through all the process of, to, uh, to be able to use Neonix, you've got to go through a series of steps, paperwork, and they, uh, you know, hiring a, your agronomist to do the paperwork, so they, they don't want to do that. Ben, ben non, c'est oui. pas compliqué, lui. Demander un dépistage et puis voir si on en a besoin, c'est pas compliqué, ça. It's not complicated to ask a scouting, but the scouting is a step to be performed. You know, I mean, uh, you there. To, somebody's got to spend time on that, you know. Remember, you may be maybe in your home, and but your agronomist is going to be out in the field, do scouting in the fall, and so on and so forth. And, well, I mean, I mean, there's no, it's no wonder that uh, less than 0.5% of the acres is still using uh, neonics, you know. They can do very easily, they can do without neonics, uh, just using uh, diamides or no insecticide at all. Est-ce que vous avez des choses à rajouter là-dessus, uh, les, les amis? C'est bon? It seems to be uh, uh, complete, uh, Sam. Je peut-être... Je ne sais pas si oui. je me trompe, là, mais mon fournisseur me parlait que même euh, au, à partir, c'est la dernière année pour les insecticides. En 2025, même les l'humidia, oui. c'est terminé. À partir yeah. de là, yeah. ça va prendre euh, le certificat d'agronome. Thank you for reminding me to say that, but uh, it's already known. There was a press release saying that the Department of Environment is going to uh, enforce the same procedure in terms of, uh, you know, justification of need for all pesticide use on seed. And in terms of insecticide, it's going to be as early as 2025. And then shortly after, 
it's going to uh, expand to all pesticides on seed. So including fungicide is coming, you know? So uh, the, the seed suppliers are, are warned. So they get, they're getting prepared. They're getting ready for supplying farmers with the proper seed with no chemicals on the seed whatsoever. So it's already started. You see what I mean? Did you understand? It's all right, Samantha? Yep, so yes, I understand uh, that. No insecticide as early as uh, 2025, compulsory, enforced by law. And then uh, I believe 2027 or 2028, no pesticide whatsoever. Thank you. Um, did anyone else want to respond to question three before I move to question four? Let's go. No, they say that uh, the Jocelyn's answer is, uh, is all Great. right, it's complete. Okay, great. All right, so the last question we have for you before we'll open up to questions from the public um, is, neonics are viewed by many as a cheap form of crop insurance. In the absence of neonic treated seeds, are you finding other ways to protect crops? Uh, are there other classes of pesticide you are using? And also the question of crop insurance comes up. And I, I feel like you've, many of you have sort of touched on this, talking about diamides, and some of you are not using insecticides altogether, but perhaps mm -hmm. you have some additional comments. Yeah. I, 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 are you aware, Sam, that uh, Vermont farmers are using diamides already? Are they familiar with Lumivia, Carpenza, and those kind of chemicals, or they're not, they're not offered? Uh, yeah. Heather, do you want to take that question? No, they're not. They're okay. not using other types of insecticides at this time. Lewis, so they're, you know, they're getting the standard neonicotinoid treatment that I'm sure all you folks were getting as well prior, you know, prior to the regulations. And okay. I mean, before that, people making decisions to <clears throat> All right. Then turning to the Quebec farmers, uh, vous avez compris la question concernant right. les Okay. Ben, dans mon cas, euh, ce que j'ai toujours su, c'est que la, la meilleure façon d'éviter des problèmes, c'est de faire des rotations de culture. Donc, pour le maïs, jamais de, deux ou trois années consécutives de maïs. À part ça, je n'aurais pas d'autres choses à rajouter. Jamais deux, tu dis jamais deux ou trois? Ja, jamais, je ne fais jamais deux années de suite en maïs. OK. Et euh, j'ai toujours compris que c'était la meilleure solution pour éviter les problèmes. Oui, c'est vrai. Mais aussi, tu sais, de, du blé de sec d'automne, entre autres, je pense, ouais, euh, des, des cultures de, de conserverie, des trucs comme ça. OK, on va, on va rapidement rotation. aller à... Oui, rotation. J'ai retenu, c'est bon. So, Justin is saying that uh, 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 in terms of insurance, what he does is that the, just one year of corn, no, no uh, corn on corn in it, on his farm. It's a quick rotation, one year per crop, and he grows... Uh, Legumes, it grows also uh, uh, winter rye. So there's a you know, turnover of different crops. Biodiversity is a key word here. It's, it's, it's a key part of the IPM, Integrated Pest Management Practices, that he, he put into, into place on his farm. Renaud? Je vois pas Renaud, il est Oui, c'est là. OK. Euh, seconde euh, Jocelyn, c'est rotation. C'est pas euh, la plus belle assurance, c'est la rotation. Alors, ensuite de ça, euh, c'est pour euh, nous autres, ça, ça l'affecte pas de notre assurance récolte. Alors, en autant que la semence est certifiée, euh, le reste de l'assurance récolte nous euh, a pas changé sa façon de, de nous assurer. Si je ne sais pas comment ça marche au Vermont, là, mais euh, juste pour leur dire que nous, ça n'a rien changé. As long as the uh, uh, crop insurance board uh, works in Quebec, uh, as long as the, uh, the seed being used by the farmers is certified seed, then they, they don't see any problem with uh, not using insecticide on the seed. They were probably influenced, you know, by the research results that uh, everybody got here in Quebec. You know, that showed definitely no benefit to farmer or to the yield of the crop of using neonics. So that's why they feel secure with their clients. They can insure the crops, even though 
no insecticide is being put on the seed. Uh, there is no problem. But Mano, again, Mano is insisting on the importance of crop rotation, changing your crop on in any given field. Don't grow the same crop two years in a row. That's what he's saying. Francis? Uh, yes, <clears throat> it's the same as uh, Jocelyn and Renault. Uh, we do a lot of uh, rotation, uh, but uh, we have uh, corn silage. So we do one year of uh, corn, sil uh, uh, corn for grain and after that corn silage, but no more than two years. Uh, we never experience bad years of uh, yield. So I'm crossing my finger, but it, it's working for now. So you can't, you can't, uh, just can't really relate any yield difference uh, compared to when he was using insecticide to now. I didn't see any difference. Yeah. Okay. Stefan. Oui, euh, nous, euh, on n'a pas eu vraiment de problème avec les années. Là. Je pense que le secret, c'est rotation, rotation, puis euh, patience. Euh, J'ai eu un cas d'infestation de, de, de verre fil de fer, puis la, dans ce cas-là, la compagnie m'a repayé la semaine. Que, des fois, un petit peu de pression sur la compagnie, euh, ils ont des poches euh, de disponibles pour ça aussi, pour toi. <rire> OK. Stéphane est saying that the experience one year, il y a des yield. Uh... Uh, crop failure because of war worms, and uh, he got the seed reimbursed by the and a compensation, financial compensation directly from the seed company for that particular occurrence. Est-ce que c'était de la semence traitée ou pas traitée? Ils n'étaient pas traités, mais euh, ils ont, ont jugé de nous payer la semence pareil. Ce n'était pas des grosses superficies non plus. OK. It wasn't a large area, large acreage either but the uh, seed supplier was ready to compensate for the yield loss that he experienced from uh, using non-treated, untreated seed in that particular case. That happened one field in one year and a small acreage. And he, again, uh, Stefan is saying the same thing. It's in emphasizing the benefit of crop rotation and patience in the spring. Well, thank you everyone for answering the questions that we had prepared for you. We can move to the chat. Um, I do notice that I, I noticed that someone asked for a clarification of what we were just discussing. So I'll pose that question to you and then Heather, you can start with the other questions in the chat. So um, someone asked for a confirmation about the crop rotation. Um, was the crop rotation intended to remove residual neonics in the soil? Just one year of rotation of a different crop was enough to remove residual. Um, the, oui. That's OK, go ahead. Uh, uh, vous comprenez la question, c'est savoir, c'est parce qu'il y a un peu de confusion à savoir uh, le, le besoin. Vous insistez tous sur l'importance de faire des rotations courtes, de ne pas semer la même culture l'une après l'autre. La question, c'est est-ce que est, cette pratique-là, c'est dans le but de réduire les résidus de néoniques dans le sol? Je connais la réponse, là, mais je vais vous laisser répondre. C'est trop plus. Mais ce n'est pas tellement pour ça. Hein. C'est pour que c'est parce que ça évite l'accumulation de la population d'insectes dans le sol puis de, de faire des dommages. C'est bien ça. Je me trompe pas. Les agronomes se trompent pas. Les non, je ne me trompe pas. OK. So the, uh, Sam, Samantha, the answer is a It's clearly that it's not the, the objective, the purpose of doing short-term rotation is not to uh, reduce the amount of insecticide residue in the soil, but rather to avoid building up the insect population for in, that would increase the risk of having getting some damage to the crop in the long term. If you go if you grow corn uh, four years in a row, then you, for sure you'll increase the risk of having uh, a lot of problems, not only insect problem, but uh, disease problems as well. So it's a good practice all around. So. Oh, thank you, Louis. All right, Heather, you want to start with some of these questions? See how many we yeah. Get so there are right. a bunch of questions, and I think um, follow up on the one um, that's focused on rotation, and I think maybe. Francis, it sounds like you grow a lot of silage as well. So maybe this is something you could answer, but 
The question is um, about, you know, typically we, our dairies here are four years of alfalfa or alfalfa grass mixed, followed by three or four years of corn silage. And so when you're shifting to such a short rotation, he's wondering how you manage that to make up like what might be an actual deficit in total forage production. Does that make sense? And and well, I'm, the, does that make sense, main, Lewis? I'm I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I get the question here, but uh, I. I'll just repeat in other words. Okay. Would, would, that, would that be a concern about uh, uh, having a, a yield difference for growing four years of corn in a row, whereas compared to a one year crop rotation with having corn college just one year and moving to hay? And then, right. you, know, you know, you see what I mean? Yes. Uh, if, because, uh, yeah. Um, the, uh, Est-ce que vous avez compris la question, les amis? Oui? OK. Vous allez nous fournir une bonne réponse. OK, Stéphane? Oui, bien, je, si je comprends bien la question, c'est qu'il fait trois ou quatre ans dans l'âge de maïs euh, en ligne. Ben, moi, oui. je, je conseillerais de mettre un, un sac d'automne pour couper un peu, là, si vraiment il ne peut pas faire de rotation. En silage de maïs, sac d'automne, récolte, sac d'automne, remet du maïs. <rire> je ne sais pas. C'est un petit conseil ouais. vite. Là, mais... En plus, ouais. il pourrait vraiment récolter euh, le sac d'automne en fourrage. Ouais. Vu qu'il y a des animaux, je pense. <rire> yeah. Stéphane est saying that the one alternative he would suggest is to grow winter rice in between two corn silage crops. Mm -hmm. Early hybrids, of course, you know. But you yep. can plant winter rice if you harvest your corn silage early enough, then uh, you can probably plant uh, winter rye in early October, uh, end of September, maybe. And then you you uh, you just harvest in the, in the next spring, then you, you chop that uh, winter rye foliage as silage and then plant another crop of corn silage. Mind you, I've seen results from Cornell saying that this procedure, this type of rotation will not improve your solid yield all, all over. I mean, it's yeah. not going to, uh, very be, uh, to be beneficial for you. Yeah, I think just, you know, sometimes land bases are restricted he here anyway, where people maybe are just getting enough feed. And so changing a rotation drastically because corn silage has, you know, often larger dry matter tons so it's really about figuring out how to balance that to shorten yeah. the rotation. But you, you, you don't necessarily have the answer to it. but It's I, probably the same in yeah. Vermont, but here in Quebec, there's a tremendous increase in the acreage covered with cover crops. Yeah. And uh, some of the species that you use in cover cropping can break down the cycle of, uh, of insects as well as diseases. Yeah. And by doing so, you probably can do without any insecticide on the... Yep. On the it will, it will uh, check... Uh, the insect population to a level so low that it won't bother you anymore. That's my point of view. Another alternative, in other words, would be to using cover crops of a different uh, 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 plant family, like legumes and so on and so forth. Okay, est-ce que vous avez d'autres suggestions? Parce que les autres, ils disent qu'en faisant des rotations, ils vont avoir besoin de plus d'encrage pour nourrir le troupeau. Donc, uh, Et donc, c'est pour ça qu'ils vont faire trois, quatre, cinq années de maïs en silage en ligne souvent, tu sais. Um, so there's, there are a couple people asking about cost. Does it cost the same for treated or untreated seed? Does it cost more? Um, it, you know, is it an inconvenience? Did it cost more at first? So what, you know, what's the cost difference, if any? Uh, so I can yes, uh, for my parts, it's around uh, 10 uh, $20 less per bag. It's uh, Canadian. So it's uh, cheaper. Yeah. Yes. Uh, oui. oui. Le, prix, le prix de la savance, quand ils n'ont pas d'infecticide, ils coûtent moins cher. Euh, Francis, pour lui, c'est 20 de moins la, la poche. 
Ouais, je, là, je dirais qu'en ce moment, c'est plus dur à le comparer parce que je ne le jette plus. Mais euh, d'un début, c'était on, 10 à 20 pièces. Il n'y a que compagnie que c'était la même prix parce qu'ils disent que ça leur coûte plus cher faire euh, ce procédé-là. Là. Mais je n'ai jamais entendu que ça coûtait plus cher à avoir une semence non traitée. La majorité du temps, c'est que c'est même moins cher. OK. So, uh, according to Renault, it, it's, it's never more expensive to use non-treated uh, seed, but depending on the company, sometimes there's no difference in cost, but most of the time, you'll see a, a, a cost advantage of 20 to, uh, 10 to 20 bucks per, per, per bag. All right, great. Um, are any other insecticides used over the life of the crop? Are people using anything else? Not on the seed, okay. but otherwise. Vous n'utilisez pas d'insecticides durant la saison de croissance? Dans le soya non plus, je pense pas. Les petits rangs, vous n'utilisez pas des, des fois ou pas? Ou... Ben, moi, dans mon cas, en production de, de légumes de transformation, de pois et d'haricots, euh, c'est le, 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 l'entreprise, qui, euh, la compagnie qui décide, qui font des dépistages, qui décide s'il y a, s'il y a besoin d'insecticides ou pas. Mais dans le maïs et dans le soya, ça fait aucun insecticide qui est mis sur la culture, excepté euh, en 2022, il y a eu une pression très forte des, euh, des pucerons et puis on l'a traité parce qu'il commençait à y avoir du dommage. Sinon, c'est, c'est jamais. J'aime mieux pas en mettre. Okay. So, Justin is saying that uh, whenever it's possible, don't, he, he'd rather not use any insecticide uh, altogether. But in 2022, on his, one of his soybean seeds, he had to use an insecticide to control the aphid, the yeah. soybean aphid. There was an yeah. infestation right there. But apart from that, on corn soybean doesn't do any, uh, doesn't use any insecticide during the season. But he also grows uh, green legumes for a local processor on yeah. the contract with that processor. And those, uh, they manage themselves, the crop. So they, they sometimes they They drop over to uh, grasslands fields and, and spray insecticide on on a legume, peas or vegetables. 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 Yeah. yeah. So somebody was asking about that, Jocelyn. The um, somebody that I might grow snap beans or green beans. They want to know if you were using untreated seeds for the vegetables or some other, you know, because that's a very susceptible mm. crop. Good so, question. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm really not sure. I will, okay. I will, j'aurai à vérifier. You would have to check that because he doesn't okay. know right away. Yep. No, that's fine. Okay. There's a lot of questions, but um, one last question is in Quebec, prior to the law that was limiting neonic use, were you concerned about losing access, you know, like losing access to seed? Um, You know, we we hear that a lot here. And I think you already mentioned this, you know, sort of scare tactics or the fear. Oh, the fear of losing yield? Losing yield, losing access to seed varieties. Um, But, yeah. In, in, the, in the three or four years, uh, with, uh, ever since that the Department of Environment announced that they were going to limit the use of insecticide, Right away, the companies were claiming that it would mean the collapse of the green sector in Quebec. You know, there was a big uh, outcry and this uh, marketing strategy and uh, fake news. Actually, you know, they were make you know, they were uh, worrying people, agronomists and producers uh, as well. But it it never happened actually. There, there was a, as I said, uh, I was talking with a friend of mine who worked, who worked for the crop uh, insurance board in Quebec. And to his knowledge, he inspected fields that were, uh, uh, farmers were claiming that they had the yield decreased because of, because of the war worms and the, the fact that they were not using insecticides anymore. And he didn't see any one instance where that was the case. No crop failure re- registered or, um, monitored by the crop insurance board in Quebec related to the uh, use of non-untreated seed. 
Est-ce que Mais, yeah. ici, au Québec aussi, on, on l'a connu, hein, les, 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 le message, le discours voulant que ça va être une catastrophe où il va y avoir des pertes de rendement importantes. Puis... Je ne sais pas où tu as mis ça, Louis. Ben, <rire> dans le, je peux te montrer, <rire> je peux montrer un article dans le producteur de grains. Là. Ah, okay. puis, euh, il, il demandait, il exigeait une compensation de tant de pourcentage pour les pertes de ouais. rendement. Bon, moi, j'ai, j'ai euh, à ma coop, jamais j'ai senti de, de pression quelconque, même que c'était plutôt le contraire. On approuvait et on voulait aller sans, sans insecticides. Euh, les plus quelques articles qui ont pu paraître euh, négatifs à ce point-là euh, ou catastrophiques, comme il semble vouloir le dire, moi, je ne les ai pas lus. Ah. Mais c'est, I, I would say that uh, there, there's, at, at the farm level, that message wasn't going to go through anyway, but at the political level, higher level in Quebec City, for example, there was a lobbying being done for the government not to uh, put in place that uh, regulation. I, I remember that, but uh, it wasn't, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's so huge. There's so much pressure coming from all around that uh, they can't uh, fight that uh, too much. Euh, well, oui, pour ajouter. Go ahead. Oui. Euh, je sais que pour eux autres, mais on a brisé la glace pour eux autres. Et vu qu'on a commencé, là, les compagnies de semences ont changé pas mal plus que dans notre temps, nous autres. La, la, comme tu disais tantôt, nous autres, la glace est brisée. Là. Ça, ça, c'est moins inquiétant. Moi, je serais moins inquiétant, inquiétant par, pour eux autres que nous autres dans le temps. Yeah. Renault is saying that uh, they, they broke the ice. In other words, they, they, they've beaten the path for others to, to follow. They, they make, you know, there's so much acres being grown here in Quebec with no insecticide that uh, it's obvious for everybody that they, the consequences are not that uh, huge. So they don't see any difference in yield. Yeah. Well, you know, the, I the, the, proof, go ahead, the Lewis. proof stems from the fact that there's so big an acreage of all the crops being grown with no insecticide that if there were to we were to experience a yield drop, then it would have been obvious by now. Right. <laughs> and it's it's not Everybody it's not mentioned in any the thing is not re, not recalling that, but I remember that a few years back there was a big uh, debate over the the impact that would have uh, such a regulation on our productivity and our tonnage, uh, our, our, our uh, crop uh, yields here in Quebec, but it, it never showed up. I mean, it, it's not even discussed anymore. Well, more or less. I, um, now the, the, the debate turns over the fact that they're going to, farmers will have to get the, the, the seed, the same quality as the organic growers, you know? Because they, 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 they'll, they'll have to find uh, hybrids and varieties with no chemicals at all. So uh, I hope, we hope that the uh, seed suppliers will uh, uh, move uh, swiftly to, uh, to provide farmers. But I'm sure it's going to, to happen, of course, because it, it, it's obvious that uh, there's, it's simpler, it's much easier for a company to not put pesticides on its seed than to coat uh, to provide those seed co- coatings on the uh, the hybrids and the varieties that they sell. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, everybody. We're coming up against time here, and we really, really appreciate all of your um, time and for experience, uh, for sharing your, your experiences and perspectives. Heather, do you want to wrap things up? Yeah, I just <laughs> I had a question for Francis. Oh. <laughs> but that's OK. We I just want to so- let everybody know. <laughs> You know, the QR code's up if you need the credit. Thank you, everyone. Um, I know we didn't get to all the questions, um, and maybe Lewis will answer some of those for us, you know, through email. But, Francis, why is it harder to get silage corn seed untreated? Because that's what people grow here. So that that was a really important thing you mentioned, and I'm curious why well uh, it was hard like uh, 10 years ago when we asked it wasn't okay. uh, for my utm i don't know if it's a utm in english les units. Units, yes, or, uh, units yeah heat units, units. yeah yeah it wasn't available but now it's uh, really easy to have okay like, yeah like i said at the beginning uh, 
uh, this year, the, the, the salesman just asked us if we want it treated or not treated. So it's really more easy now than it was uh, 10 years ago. So as a clarification, you said the co-op was treating, they treat the seed. They were treating the seed. It's they treat it, with yeah. the fungicide? It's, 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 yeah, well, most of the seed that uh, the four panelists are using are still treated with fungicide on the seed. Yeah. But there it's being treated locally. Uh, for some supplier, yes, but not okay. all of them. I so thought, who, like who, who's the main corn seed company? Oh, or are there a well, bunch? Yes. That's a question, good question, but I would uh, if I'm, I would say Pioneer is probably the main Pioneer. Uh, okay. He's uh, he's got the largest uh, share of the market. Okay. And the legal Est-ce que c'est Pioneer qui vend plus de semences de maïs au Québec ou il y a Ils sont bons. Il y a aussi à la coop, il y a Maïsex. Maïsex. Qui combine les variétés élites dans le temps. Décalbe. OK. OK. Décalbe, Maïsex, Pioneer, Propland. Propland. OK. Yep. Right. So that that was kind of, it's a logistical thing, you know. Are the co-ops buying the seed untreated? Ordering yes. it ahead of time, and then it comes yeah. in to Quebec to the co-op, and they treat it with fungicide. That's even right. the pioneer That's stuff. What I, I think that I'm just saying, so it's like the co-op. Oui. But to respond, but vu que je suis rendu chez administrateur à Coop, uh, c'est plus fait au Québec. C'est vraiment mes ex en Ontario. Okay. On n'a plus rien au Québec. C'est vraiment juste mes okay. ex. So Renaud is involved in his local co-op and he's an okay. a, a, administrator and he says that it's no longer done in Quebec. Okay. All the seed yeah. used in I'm Quebec, sorry. even co-op, comes all coated from Ontario. Okay. It, yeah, I was just curious. It's a like a more of a logistical thing since yeah. we don't have that same system that you have. Uh, everything comes direct from, you know, Pioneer, Bravant, you know, whoever we're getting it from. So we don't have too much control. Okay, sorry to hold you all. <laughs> That's selfish. That's okay. My selfish questions, but <laughs> but Lewis, we a can very follow up. Exchange. <laughs> nice meeting you. Yeah, as uh, likewise, always great to meet other uh, farmers and agronomists. So uh, we'll all be in touch, I'm sure, and have a great winter. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everybody. Yes, Bye. Thank you. Thank you.